Southend United Football Club, based in Essex, founded over 100 years ago in a local pub just minutes away from Roots Hall, the current home of the Shrimpers. I last visited this place almost six years ago for one of my on the road videos. I always thought I'd go back someday, but not under these circumstances, and certainly not for the last time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Football Revisited. This could be a little bit of a sad one, so spare a thought for Southend fans as we find out how and why come March the 1st, 2023, Southend United Football Club may no longer exist. Football, whether we like to admit it or not, has become about the money. The biggest clubs out there spending money left, right and centre on players every single transfer window. And then you've got the guys right at the bottom of the pyramid that can't even afford an electricity bill. Jesus, it's bright. Let that be hope for today. I made a video the other day about my team, Tottenham, a team I've supported since day one, or as long as I can remember. I actually went along to one of their protests and uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't really much. And what I was trying to explain in that video is it's not that bad. Spurs currently playing the Champions League. They've got a world-class training facility for their players and a billion pound multi-use stadium, which is generating revenue constantly, which puts them in the top 10 richest clubs in football. According to FIFA, there's 3,903 professional teams and my team are the 10th richest. What Daniel Levy, our owner, has done as a businessman has stabilised our football club, which is something that not many teams can say. I know tomorrow I can go to Tottenham West Ham without a problem. I know next month I can go to games. I know next season I can renew my season ticket. My club has stability and my routines and my, my love for the club, whether they're doing well or not, is still going to be a part of my life. As for South End fans, they don't know if they're going to be watching their club next month, let alone next season. Jesus, that's sun. I'm actually going to go and meet a guy called Connor, big South End fan. We're going to find out how South End find themselves in all this mess. You heard about the Berry and Bolton situation, and I know that was kind of a one of a kind thing at the time but it happens to other clubs mm. and it's happening to us and we've had barely any media coverage. We've had the local news, we've had one newspaper article. We need more people like you. We need everyone down there that we can get as much, as many faces to South End as possible. It's a club in a, in a city of over 200,000 people that's gonna die and we're gonna be left without a club. It's heartbreaking to think about. Like, this is not even, this is not just my club, this is people's livelihoods. This is, it's everything to us. It's, it's everything to me, it's everything to most of the people here, so. That's the best I could do. South End for me back in the day were the next biggest team that I could take a liking to. They are also blue and that didn't offend me at all being a Spurs fan. Although as the seasons went on, they started falling further and further down the Football League. One of my greatest achievements is turning that around off Football Manager, back then Championship Manager. The 99, 2000, 2000, 2001 versions, yeah, you couldn't beat them. In real life though, following back-to-back -back relegations from Division 1 down to Division 3, the 98 slash 99 season was where Ron Martin, current owner, came in and bought the club for £4 million. They spent the next five years in Division 3, never really challenging for promotion at all. It was the following season in 2004 to 2005 where everything changed. Now, how on earth did my local non-league side, Grey's Athletic, come into this? Well, if you've been watching this channel a while, you would know that I actually lived at Grey's Athletic, the flats that overlooked it. The season before 04-05, West Ham Academy player Freddie Eastwood joined Grey's Athletic. After smashing it that season, it was clear he could play levels above. And that's when Southend came in. Initially got him on a loan, but here's what happened on his debut. Freddie Eastwood coming into the strike force. And we just signed from Grey's. Here's Gower. And Gray, early chance at South End! And an early chance for Freddie Eastwood, who gets the goal in his debut! They didn't stop there as he scored another two in this game, a debut hat trick for him as South End went on to beat Swansea 4 2. They came fourth that season, gaining promotion via the playoffs, and Freddie Eastwood netting 21 goals that year was a big part to play. The following season in League One, it got even better. Freddie on fire again, joint top scorer in the league, champions and promotion to the championship. Unfortunately for the Blues, it was very short lived and they were relegated back down to League One the very next season. They do take one good memory from that year though. Of course, our man Freddie Eastwood popping up again, this time against Manchester United in the fourth round of the League Cup. Free kick as Ronaldo watches on and sends them to the quarterfinals. And that's all the football we're going to talk about for the minute. Since their relegation for the championship, they've been down as far as League 2, back up to League 1. Because with all this going on in the background of the club, the financials, it's in a bit of a state. If we go back to 2009, South End were faced with two winding up orders from the HM Revenue and Customs over unpaid tax bills. One year later in 2010, they were all paid and everything was dropped. In 2019, things were very busy off the pitch. Seven senior players consulted with the PFA after not being paid for December. Ron Martin eventually came up with 140,000 and said that it would not happen again. In January 2020, another winding up order from HMRC was put in place, although it later came out that this was dismissed and the bills have been cleared. Between then and now, we've had more players unpaid, more dealings with HMRC, the EFL being involved with points deductions and fines. And going back to the football for a minute, the club hit a new low in May 2021. They dropped out of the Football League for the first time in 101 years. The club is in an absolute state, everything right down to St John's Ambulance providing first aid on a match day. They no longer turn up because of the outstanding fees. Despite all this, plans for a new ground and training 
training facility were on the cards not too long ago. They've gone round and round in circles with HMRC in the past, but this really could be the final now in the coffin. They need to come up with 1.4 million by the 1st of March, otherwise the club is gone. Now this game against Gateshead is significant because it is the last game before March the 1st. This could be the last time these fans ever set foot in Roots Hall. Now they could pay this bill and crack on, but it's the not knowing. And for that reason, they're coming here expecting the worst and savouring every single minute of what is a potential last ever football match at Roots Hall. As far as the occasion goes, good start. <laughs> Let's not forget what they really want. Connor mentioned it before about Berry and Bolton. Now I asked myself the question back then. What if your football club just went under? Suddenly that annoying restrictive view is something you want back. The people you see week in, week out, sometimes you know their names, sometimes you don't. Either way, with your football club gone, it's unlikely you're going to see them again soon. I'm pretty certain you'll miss the overpriced crap food that you moan about each week, but still eat. My brain would be all over the show. I'd be analysing everything. Is that the last time I'm going to see a ball fly over the bar down there? Is it the last time we might concede down this end? It really is tough. Hi. thing is though, football is one of them things where you forget your problems. But some of these fans' problems might actually be the football club. But to be fair, when that whistle goes, you can't help but get drawn into it. Why? Who ate all the pies? Fred ate all the pies by the looks of it. I do wonder what's going to actually happen at the end of this game. Obviously went to Leighton Orient a few years ago with all their problems. Never witnessed anything like it since. What I do know is the owner, Ron Martin, is not here today. Probably a smart thing on his part. Despite helping him go up the Football League, he's been responsible for him coming down as well. And I think the thing that annoys me most is he's not selling this club. People have tried to buy. He's not interested. <laughs> I'm at it again. Is that the last first half of football at Roots Hall? Uh, really bothering me. You'd almost rather know if it is the end. Is this the future? I don't know. Is there a future? We don't know. I thought for the second half we'll go nearer the front, get a better view of the ground. Oh man, the basic high-tech scoreboard's gone. I say basic, they had the whole team names in the scoreboard back then. Now it's more about the over 300 cars in stock. I mean, why deal with anyone else when you've got that many? It's not a thing here at Roots Hall. No eyeful for stewards and security whatsoever. But as players make their way back onto the field, that is not the time. And John, like most photographers, has actually been playing football manager. The wall over here seems a lot lower than what I experienced last time around. I said in my last video, it's all about the back row. Maybe South End did have a saying that. If you were wondering, John is absolutely packing, by the way. You ain't missing anything with that lens. As for the stewards, it's completely the opposite. I do love the imperfections of this place. The turnout's been great. The crowd's got behind the team. And you'd think as the seconds tick by, and with 90 on the clock, the mood would be a bit of a sad one. Well, I'll let you be the judge. Like I said, did try and spoil the mood. But that was and could well be the final chance at Roots Hall. That's it, potentially, and I have to keep saying potentially because we still don't know what the result of this will be. But I think every football fan out there can sympathise with what's going on. For a lot of these fans, it's all they've ever done. Football on a Saturday. Win, lose or draw, you keep coming back, don't you? But after March the 1st, that might not be an option for South End fans. Honestly, I've got everything crossed for this lot. If you want to leave any messages of support to fans in the comments below, feel free to do so. And I will see you all in the next video.